Okay, welcome to this video. In the next sort of quarter of an hour, we're going to look at the topic from the AQA um, certificate in chemistry, uh, which is organic chemistry, which on the specification is headed up as carboxylic acids, alcohols, and esters, or maybe in a different order. To start with, I'm going to look at actually what organic chemistry is. So, I'm going to do so by showing you three individual molecules. Molecule one is an amino acid. Um, the next molecule is going to be an ester. And the third molecule is glucose. Okay, so what we have here then are three very distinct molecules, some similarities, some differences, but what is very important here is that each one of these uh, contains carbon. And this really is what underpins organic chemistry. It's chemistry of carbon. That's not to say that everything that contains carbon is an organic molecule, but certainly all organic molecules do contain carbon. So in terms of these organic molecules, there are billions and billions of them. And what we have is a particular way of naming them so that we can actually take a molecule like this, we can give it a particular name, and someone else can see that, they can draw it, and they can use it as, as they need. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to look at a simple way of naming uh, the molecules that appear within the AQA certificate in chemistry. Okay, so... This table here is the basis, really, for how you name a lot of these compounds. And the way they're named primarily is due to, or is down to how many carbons they have in what we would say is the longest chain. Now, in the case of the AQA certificate, we can just look at how many carbons there actually are within the molecule, and that will suffice. Now, the way it's named, then, if we have one carbon with our molecule, we find that our name will start with meth. If we have two, eth. 3 is prop, 4 bute, 5 is pent, just like the shape, 6 is hex, again, just like the shape. Now, in terms of actually what you need to know for your GCC, these are the three. So it's the first, second, and third carbons. So meth, eth, and prop. You must know them. And you must know those in relation to the, the compounds I'm going to talk about in just a moment. Now, before I actually do talk about these compounds, there are a couple of terms that are really important to actually for you to understand and for you to sort of for you to be able to define. Uh, the first of those is homologous series. Now, the term homologous series is a kind of a fancy way, really. It's a term that's used broadly within organic chemistry. It's really a fancy way of saying family name. So, an alcohol, for example, the family of alcohols. The alcohol is the homologous series. The other term is functional group. Now a functional group is the part of the molecule within the homologous series that actually gives it its characteristic properties. So for an alcohol we would have the OH group and in a moment over here I'll show you kind of how that looks and I'll highlight the functional groups that you need to be able to recognize and draw. So we're going to look at five particular organic molecules but only actually naming and drawing four of those. The fifth, esters, is a much more simple example because there's only one that you need to know. Okay, so the first organic molecule we're going to look at uh, is an alkane and in this case here alkane is the homologous series. It is the name given to this family of molecules. Um, now, the alkane we're going to look at is this one. This is ethane. Um, and the way we know that it's an, an alkane is that it only contains carbon and hydrogens, but it also have only single bonds. Okay, there are no other bonds or no other molecules other than this. And that's really, it's not the greatest example to show you functional group, but in terms of functional groups, really, it's the fact that we have only single bonds and we just have this hydrocarbon molecule. So the next one to look at is slightly different, and it's an al keen so here we have an e rather than the a there so an alkene um, and the alkene we're going to look at is ethene okay so here we have a molecule of ethene um, and again here what we can see is we have actually a, a more defined functional group this time and this here the carbon carbon double bond that is the functional group for the alkenes next one we're going to look at we're going to look at alcohols Again, alcohol being the homologous series, um, and we're going to look at methanol. Okay, so here we have a molecule of methanol. In this case, our functional group is dictated by the OH that's bonded on to this carbon here, and that tells us that we have an alcohol present. The final one with drawing and naming is going to be a carboxylic acid. Okay, so here we have a carboxylic acid, and this carboxylic acid is called 
propanoic acid. And here our functional group is defined by this end of the molecule, this COOH region. So COOH, and again I've circled that functional group there for you. Now, if we look at the names, we can actually see how this table applies to these molecules now. So this first one, we have two carbons, so two carbons, and we have that eth, and that gives us our the prefix here, eth. Now, the second half of the molecule, that's determined by the functional group that's present. So in this case, we have only carbons and hydrogens with single bonds. We have an alkane. They always end in A-N-E, so we have ethane. Over here, we have an alkene, denoted by the functional group of the carbon-carbon double bond. They always end in E-N-E, -E, hence ethene, again, two carbons. This time, we only have one carbon, and that's why we have meth, rather than eth over there. Alcohols are denoted by the A-N-O-L, anol, hence methanol. And finally, the carboxylic acids, this one, three carbons, so I've got them for the prop, or prop prefix, and it ends in anoic acid. One point noting at the, here is the fact that if you look, a way to actually draw these molecules and to make sure you've actually drawn them correctly is to make sure all of the carbons always have four bonds. And that is to say that they have four lines coming off them. So here, carbon, it has one, two, three, four. This carbon, one, two, three, four. This one, one, two, three, four. And the same with this one. Again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the carbon must always have four lines coming off it, four bonds. And that's a way to check really that you've drawn the molecule correctly and you've got all the then H's and O's in the right place, depending on what you've actually got. What we can also do is we can actually take these molecules and we can abbreviate them. So rather than drawing them out in what we would call displayed formulae, so these are all example of displayed formulae, we can condense it to what we call structural formulae. And all that is, is you take this displayed format and you just put it into more simple terms, which is easier to write. And you start with the carbons and you just write down what's attached. So this first one would be CH3, CH3. The second one, CH2, CH2, which you may also see written as CH2, CH2 to show the double bond present again between the carbons here. This one, CH3OH, and finally CH3, CH2, COOH. And again we can see within this the functional groups very present here, OH, and here the COOH from there. So the last thing to look at is um, esters. So esters are just uh, another type of organic molecule, just like um, alkanes, alkenes, alcohols, carboxylic acids. They contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, now I'm going to draw an ester first of all. Um, now this is an ester called ethyl ethanoate. So just draw this quickly. Um, and what's quite nice about the AQA uh, scheme is that you actually only need to know this one ester. Now what I mean by that is that if you are asked to draw an ester or you are asked to name an ester, it will be this one. So this is the ester and its name is ethyl ethanoate. So it will always be this one. Now that doesn't mean they can't ask you questions relating to other esters and expect you to be able to um, apply your knowledge of an ester. One thing being this, that this portion here, this is the functional group for the esters. And drawn out that looks like this. So on one side you'd have C, O, O, linking. So this whole molecule we could therefore draw it, we could write it out as CH3, COO, CH2, CH3. And we can see CH3, COO, CH2, CH3, ethylethanoate. So if you ever see this thing, it has to be exactly like this. It'll have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen with another oxygen attached to the carbon, and then you have these two trailing bonds off the um, oxygen and one off the carbon. That there tells you you've got an ester. The other way is, is the name. 
For example, um, you might see one called Propyl Athanoate. Or you could get Butyl Methanoate. You can get a variety, but it'll always have a Isle followed by Anoate. So provided you have the Isle and Anoate, you know you're dealing with an ester and with that functional group there. So because we're looking to create an ester that has two carbons in this part and two carbons in this part, we need initial molecules that have two carbons in each. Now this is the bit here with the C double bond to the O comes from the carboxylic acid. In this case I would use CH3COOH. I would use ethanoic acid. And I would add to that CH3 CH2 OH ethanol. And you can see here ethanol ethanoic acid. Now this is a reversible reaction um, and what I can form is of course my, my ester here my CH3 COO CH2 CH3 um, and if you were to actually add up these the carbons and hydrogens here and the oxygens and then what you've got here you would find that you've got some missing because there's something else made and that something else is H2O water so the way this reaction works is that each one of these OH groups this is where the actual linkage takes place so the OH group here and here link together um, to create a an, an, what's called an ester bond um, and that's essentially what forms the actual ester we've got there so in doing so OH plus OH we're left with an O here which means that the H2O part is actually kicked out and that's what is formed here um, and that's about it really with esters this you aren't expected to know you would be told this in an exam if they wanted you to use it um, so obviously use bear that in mind with um, with any questions that you could be asked okay so the final part really of this of this lecture of this video is to look at the properties and uses of alcohols carboxylic acids and of esters so to start with we'll look at alcohols there are three particular things within the certificate for chemistry that you need to know about alcohols and they are as follows fuels reaction with sodium and oxidation so as fuels alcohols burn very very well and certainly alcoholic drinks sometimes light provided that they've got enough alcohol in them and when they are burning they're just reacting with oxygen just as anything else that combusts within air does um, if we were to look at an equation we could look at an equation for ethanol burning in air so here we have the equation for ethanol reacting with oxygen which is coming from the air to produce as carbon dioxide and water just like when we looked at the alkanes burning other fuels burning it's exactly the same same product here balanced obviously the same way balanced via carbon dioxide first then the water and then finally the oxygen the next thing is to look at their reaction with sodium and if we were to add a piece of sodium to a beaker of ethanol we wouldn't see a massive amount happening it, we would see a bit of fizzing it's quite a slow reaction there would be a bit of fizzing taking place as hydrogen is produced and eventually the piece of sodium would get gradually smaller as it reacted away so we would see fizzing and it would get smaller in terms of equations what's happening here we have the following okay so we have sodium plus ethanol in this case could be any alcohol I'm just choosing ethanol and that gives us sodium ethoxide plus hydrogen so we're always going to get hydrogen produced which of course we can test for using the squeaky pop test and here we have the sodium ethoxide if this were methanol we would get sodium methoxide and all the rest following again the rules as naming the final portion to look at is oxidation now one of the ways oxidation can occur is through microbial action so that's microbes bacteria that are within the air and one actual real life situation where you actually see this happening is if you were to have a bottle of wine and you were to leave it out for a couple of days you would find that the wine would ultimately taste quite vinegary and that's because of the following so what happens is the ethanol um, is, is attacked by the microbes and actually they oxidize it to ethanoic acid and ethanoic acid is really vinegar or vinegar rather is a dilute solution of ethanoic acid now this can be done in the air by microbes or we can use an oxidizing agent which we can give the symbol O and we can do that in the lab now I'm going to look at carboxylic acids 
Okay, so carboxylic acids this is actually quite a simple, small section really, the properties and uses here. Um, in terms of properties, carboxylic acids react like any other acid, and that means that they will react with carbonates, and that's really a way to test that we have an acid, is if it will react with the carbonate to produce carbon dioxide, and it would react in the following way. So, we see that we have the metal carbonate reacting with the acid, whether that be ethanoic acid or a stronger acid like hydrochloric, that produces metal salt, water, and carbon dioxide. And of course we can test for this, we would see fizzing if this carbon dioxide is produced, and we can test this using lime water, and we would see a cloudy result. The second thing to look at with carboxylic acids is the type of acids they are, and we find that they are weak acids, and this is an incredibly important point. You should have come across the term weak, um, as well as the term strong within the acids topic. It must not be confused with concentrated or dilute. They are not the same. They are very, very different. Weak is to do with how many, and the term strong is to do with how the acid dissociates when it's in water. So for something like ethanoic acid, we would have the following. So we see we've got the ethanoic acid molecule, and we've got this equilibrium sign, this reversible reaction occurring, where we have the ethanoate ion, which is just this minus the hydrogen, and here is that hydrogen as an ion. And this is obviously what gives us the acid. Now what we find is actually when this occurs, when this reaction occurs, it's very, very infrequent. Out of about a thousand of these starting, only about, around about four would actually change into the ion, the ethanoate ion, and the hydrogen ion. So it does not happen very often. That means that actually the pH is higher than strong acids, around about five to six, and so universal indicator we would get more of a yellowy orange colour present. And the final point with the properties and uses is to look at esters. Now we've seen that ester, uh, and this is it again, ethyl ethanoate. Now, esters have two particular uses, and that's linked to the fact that the esters often have quite sweet smells. So they're used, number one, in food flavourings, and secondly, they're used in perfumes. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video, and the end of this organic chemistry section within the AQA Certificate in Chemistry.